Polymer clay and metal clay offer endless possibilities when combined together. In this project, you will learn tips and tricks when creating a silver pendant from PMC3 with an oval polymer clay center. Let's get started by working with metal clay and creating a back bezel. Our first step is to roll out a slab three cards thick. I'm working on a clay board surface and using our clay rolling frames for easy and accurate rolling. Pick the exterior shape you wish to use for your pendant shape. This piece will be the back to our pendant. When completed, set aside to dry. Next I roll out another slab, three cards thick. This will be the front of my pendant, and I use the same shape for the exterior. I choose another shape template to cut out an oval to be used as a center. This will be our bezel when we later add polymer clay. When you're finished here, set this piece aside to dry. When your two pieces have dried enough to become leather hard, it's time to cut a back bezel. The secret to adding polymer clay to metal clay is the back bezel technique. Use a bench knife to shave the oval bezel to a 45 degree angle. You want to make sure you get the bezel nice and even. This bezel will create a space that locks the polymer clay in when pressed into the bezel. When I have my angle cut around the entire bezel, it's time to combine the two pieces. Here, I use slip to join the two slabs to create one pendant. First, cover the inside of the front slab completely with slip. Once covered, join the two pieces together and press lightly. You'll want to make sure both pieces line up correctly. Next, slip the sides. Using slip is a great way to completely join your pieces together. Use a small brush, and as you apply, slip fills the joint around the exterior of the entire piece. This will save you a ton of sanding time and gives you a beautiful and clean look. When your joints are filled, set aside to dry. Once the pendant is bone dry, you're ready to refine your piece. I use a smoothie sanding stick to refine my edges and use wet dry sandpaper to smooth the faces. It's important to go back and clean any excess slip out of the bezel. Next, you can add any type of bale you desire. For this piece, I drill a small hole for a jump ring. I use a round file to get my hole just the way I need it. Now, we're ready to fire. The two clays cannot be fired together because polymer clay burns at 300 degrees. Our pendant is made from PMC3 so it will need to be fired at 1650 for two hours. Place the piece on the kiln shelf and return after two hours. Once the piece is cooled, remove from the kiln and you're ready to start finishing. First, start by burnishing with a brass brush. I want to refine my piece to a smooth mirror finish. Using my Fordham, I continue to refine my piece using a coarse, medium, and ultra-fine bristle disc. From here, you can begin adding polymer clay or add a patina for an antique look. Buff any fingerprints off your piece and add it to the patina solution. When the piece has turned to your liking, remove from the patina and rinse with water. For this piece, I use Cool Tools Patina Gel to get the oxidized look I desire. I remove some patina using a 6000 grit polishing paper. After that, I use an 8000 grit. And finally, I like to finish up with a polishing cloth. Now we're ready to add polymer clay. Here's a piece of polymer clay I created using the texture technique in our Working with Polymer Clay video. You can use any piece of polymer you create, but make sure the shape roughly matches your bezel. Place the polymer in the bezel and begin pressing it into place. You want to make sure you press the edges evenly into the back bezel we created earlier. I'm using a small spatula tool, but you can also use your finger. 
Once your piece is in place, make sure all your edges are locked in securely. From here, we're ready to fire the polymer. The polymer I'm using is Sculpey Primo and will need to be baked at 275 degrees. This craft oven that Cool Tools offers is a great and easy way to fire polymer clay. Set the timer to 30 minutes and begin baking. You can also use an oven to fire the polymer clay pieces. After 30 minutes, let the piece cool and remove from the oven. You'll want to make sure your polymer piece is nice and smooth since it's the focal point of your piece. Using a fine smoothie sanding stick, I wet sand the polymer piece. When you get it just right, add a jump ring and string it with any stringing material you want. After you string it, you're finished. Now you have a piece that features beautiful metal clay and the brilliant colors of polymer clay. Visit our learning center at www.cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, contests, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.